Ah, you have returned. It is good to see you, my friends. Welcome to this episode of the Binacle Inspiration Series, a special episode that's not your typical Saturday morning show or evening. I post them in the evening here, but is that morning in America? Depends where you live in the world. But besides the point, We'll be talking all about round one of the Bio Cup, which is on the solar system. And there are multiple different sub-themes for this, focusing on each of the different planets in our vicinity of space. The old solar system we got. The Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Those are each of the individual sub-themes that a bunch of the contestants have been divided into. And so we're going to be covering some mocks that fit very well with those themes. So, as, you know, if you're building in one of those themes or you're in the redemption round and you want to make something that's related to this, by all means, here's some ideas for how you can do so. Or you might just be like, dude, solar system? What a great idea. I'm going to build a mock based off of the moon. Go right ahead. This stuff should inspire you very nicely. And if you're like, man, this BIS BioCup coverage thing, it's pretty rad. Or, you know what, I want to learn more about the people who entered and stuff like that. Be sure to check out the last video I posted, which is the BioCup Roundup. It's exceedingly funny, one of my favorite videos I've made ever. And if you enter the Bio Cup, your mock is in that video. Yes, I put 160 odd mocks in one episode. It's a good time. And there's funny ads in it too that I made that aren't actually real ads. It's a good time, go watch it. I worked hard on that. You'll have a great time, I promise. Besides the point though, let's get stuck into it. This first mock here is by Mitch Henry and it's called Oh Lonesome Me. So I figured I'd put some mocks in that are stuff that the judges has made. Why? Because they're the judges. They're going to be judging you. It's good to study what they like and what they do, because as a result, if you put some of that stuff in your mock, you might get some bonus points, you know? So, really like the helmet that this guy's got. It's very much, I don't, especially the angle that it's at here, he does look like he's down, especially because the name of this mock is Oh Lonesome Me. And uh, this is a little description on the mock here. It says, as a child, Captain Benjamin Benny Thomas always dreamed of soaring through the stars in his very own spaceships. Perhaps his dreams will come true one of these days, but until then, it's back to routine maintenance for him. And that whole entire story is so beautifully communicated in this entire mock, and I think the majority of that is coming through the head design here. Just the angle that it's at, how he's kind of looking down, he looks like a little sad guy. And that's awesome. You know, the fact that he is so effectively able to communicate. You know, if I were to enter this into the bio cup, if I'd made this and I was Mr. Mitch Henry, I would probably put it under that moon category if that was the thing I was building for because, you know, this looks like a, a dude on the moon, especially with the background and everything. And I, I love the fact that he's so effectively captured that, but he's also got a little bit of a story behind it and he's got a lot of personality behind it as well. Uh, so it's kind of got multiple layers there that uh, it's, very some it's very much something the judges can work off of. You know, it's the fact that not only is the mock cool, not only does it fit the concept, but it's got a lot of personality and character and also really clever part usages and things in it as well. So if you got all those sorts of boxes ticked, you're going to do well, that's for sure. And I just mentioned nice part usages. I love what he's done with the helmet here. So this specific piece is from the CCBS uh, Star Wars Ultra Build Death Trooper. This is sort of one of the shoulder armor pieces that they had, which had this cool printing on it. And it's awesome here because it kind of looks like some sort of reflective surface or something kind of seems to mirror, you know, the, the like a typical space helmet thing. You can kind of see the reflection in it and stuff. It kind of looks a little bit like that. So I think that's a really nice way of using those printed pieces to your advantage because often some printed pieces can be a bit of a pain to use because the part itself is good, but the printing on it just doesn't work for what you're going for. Uh, but as we can see here, you know, it's working quite well. One of the other things I love is the cloth edition on the torso. It's it's underneath all the armor like that, but it's sort of popping out a bit. And I think that's so fitting because actual sort of astronaut spacesuits kind of look a bit like that. So actually basing it off the real thing and then kind of literally simulating that with, uh, you know, official Lego cloth. That's such a beautiful addition and really nicely done here. And honestly, it's one of my favorite parts of this mock here. Just a simple little addition, but it does so much. And it's literally just feeding cloth into the gap on a mock. You know, it's, it's not that complicated, but it's doing so much for it. And overall, the general kind of color blocking here, you know, just how he's kind of got these boots and these specific gloves in the uh, dark bluish gray here, and then the bits of black above it and this sort of focus of white sort of around the middle of the mock. That's so cool, you know, it kind of mirrors what you would imagine a typical spacesuit to look like. And of course, I imagine this is more Mitch's own interpretation of a spacesuit, not officially based off, you know, a real world spacesuit. But besides the point, that's a really good idea to to do that, to do a bit of research, look into some spacesuits, whether they're from Earth or whether they're from science fiction and other crazy worlds, and base your mock off of that a little bit. Sort of play around, see what you can do. 
Because honestly, I think that's such a clever, great idea. And it's going to make things a bit easier for you because you're seeing someone else who's done it and then you just kind of riff off of that a little bit. And then two other quick things I really like about this, all the little additions here, like this sort of... Uh, pipe array system, little rover, and a few other things that he's playing with in these pictures. Such beautiful, nice additions that, again, continue to communicate atmosphere, but also the very, very subtle thing of a black background and then a grey sort of floor that he's sitting on, that does so much for this mock. It's communicating, you know, a location, an atmosphere. Honestly, without that, I think this mock would, like, if this was just on a black background, it'd be like, okay, that's cool, but because there's this beautiful stark grey against this beautiful stark black background, where there's no stars in the sky, you're like, he's in space, why are there no stars? It kind of reflects his story, it's that thing of he's, he's hoping for something and it's not there, he's dreaming, but his dreams aren't coming true, and so it's like, well, of course there's no stars in the sky, there's no beauty, it's just a pure black emptiness kind of reflecting, I imagine, how this guy's feeling. And it's incredible because he's literally just got a black piece of card and a grey piece of card and put a mock on it and taken a picture. That is so simple and not even related to the mock, and yet it's helping it. So do that. When you're taking your picture, really consider what, uh, you know, the background looks like. Can you actually make that inform the story or atmosphere of the mock? Because this mock here, well, it's uh, it's got that going for it. It's very, very clever. It's a very subtle thing, but it's doing a lot. I really like that, Mitch. Nice work. Let's uh, jump into the next mock. This is by Moko, and it's Zeus. So I have actually talked about this one before, so I won't talk about it in too much detail. But one of the things to remember in this round of the Biocarp, of course, we are talking about the solar system. But specifically, the judges love it when you go off topic. You know, they applaud that, in fact. If you can do it well and justify it really nicely, you'll get more points for it. And that's the thing. This, this round was intentionally done with all of those planets because each one of them has a Roman god associated with it. You know, Neptune and Neptune and the rest of the others. Of course, Zeus, I don't think, is named after any of the planets in our area of the solar system here. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think he is. Uh, but besides the point, this mock looks so godlike and would be perfect to take notes from if you are planning on going the god route uh, on one of those mocks. So how has he done that? He's gone really over the top on everything. He's made this guy huge. He's given him beautiful, bright gold armor, a massive weapon, this huge halo in the background. He's gone over the top, OTT. And that's perfect for a god because... They are an exceedingly powerful being. Of course, they're going to be over the top, huge, massive, big, got a beard and everything. That's certainly the route to go here. So if you are building a mock, I'd suggest doing that. And also, I talked about this halo design here. I love that addition. It makes it look so, like, biblical and godlike. And it's also this these beautiful lines forming that kind of draw attention to the head and kind of silhouette the body and everything with this big circle in the background. It looks so regal and godlike and majestic, and that's perfect for a, a god if you're building one. So definitely some stuff like that is a, a good thing to address. And also the cloth elements too, that does sort of help uh, communicate. Uh, you know, you take a look at a lot of sort of art surrounding gods from, you know, Greek or Roman mythology or the Bible and stuff like that. They're all typically wearing robes of some kind. So putting in a, a little bit of cloth like that is definitely a good idea. So some interesting things that he's doing here that really communicate that godlike aesthetic. I have done various episodes on mythology and Egyptian gods and things like that. Uh, I'll, I'll remember to put those in as the suggested video at the end of this video. But uh, be sure to give those videos a watch if you're planning on going down that god route uh, for those planet names there. Because, well, those videos go into a lot of detail. Not only about this mock, but just on kind of gods in general. So uh, definitely something to think about. Very cool, let's move on to the next mock. It is by David Hensel and is called All-Terrain Heavy Transport Unit. So, uh, yeah, I know this is the Bionicle Inspiration series and this is a very heavily system mock, but I'll have you know that Mitch Henry himself showed me this mock, so clearly he's a judge and he wants you to look at it, so, well, you know, let's get some notes from it. But also, the other thing to th uh, kind of factor in here is the fact that Yes, it's purely system, but you can introduce system into your Bionicle mocks. Yes, this has very little Bionicle, in fact, probably none at all. Depending on your point of view, some of these things might be considered Bionicle because it's technic heavy, blah, blah, blah. But besides the point, there are things we can learn from this that we can apply to our stuff for the competition. So let's talk about it. One great idea of building a rover that could be on the planet, you know, especially if you've got like Mars or the Moon or something as your chosen theme. Or heck, even if you have some of the other ones, you know, what kind of rover would... Uh, the people of Earth send to that planet to explore it? How would it work? How does the atmosphere of that planet affect that? You know, maybe you're in a more sort of gas-focused planet, you know, would it actually be a rover with wheels? Or maybe it's like a hover rover or something, you know? Cool concepts like that that take it away from the kind of humanoid factor and, you know, focus it on a, um, a more interesting light like uh, this mock has here. I also really like the uh, sort of nice part use there at the back using those big old wheel pieces there as a sort of like barrel or something. I imagine it's like a storage container or something to, you know, store rocks or maybe it's got an air supply in it, stuff like that. 
you know, just cool to use tires like that in a, you know, a way that isn't a typical tire, right? Of course, treads as well, very perfect, very much conveys that Rover look. And I also love how uh, David here has built the awesome kind of windshield kind of cockpit area of this mock here, using some of those hinge pieces there to kind of curve uh, this sort of angle here with all these orange windshield pieces. And then adding these flex tube and droid arm bits here as this sort of uh, kind of protective thing or kind of like a rail of some kind over the top of it. It does help kind of communicate this really interesting aesthetic that you would probably more typically see on a rover like that. I quite like it. And also really cool to see these uh, these sort of headlights here at the front. Of course, you would need that in uh, if you were a rover exploring uh, the, the outer reaches of space somewhere. Very important to have something like that. Uh, it's just a, a practical thing that would make sense and would be on a real-life version of this, so why not put it on your mock as well? So yeah, pretty cool and uh, some, some interesting stuff here to learn and take notes from, even on a very system-heavy mock, but stuff you could easily apply to a bunkle. On to the next mock, this is by Matt Goldberg and is called Celestial Journey. So this is just a cute little small guy, you know, sure, you're entering a contest, but there's no reason you need to always have it be this massive, huge, exceptional thing. Why? Because this gets the job done. It's a cute little spaceship, it fits, it uses parts in some clever ways here, and it's got a bit of personality behind it too, I think. And it's cute, it's fun, it's enjoyable, you know. All of that stuff can still get you points in a contest. So maybe you're a little stretched for time and you go, I, I can't really afford to build something massive right now, or I'm just not getting any ideas, or blah blah blue. Well, think about something a little smaller. Think about something that's a little different from what you might be thinking. Go a different route and see what kind of comes up with that and the, the different uh, things you could do and the, the different uh, roads you could go down. Especially, too, let's look at the comments on this page on this mock specifically. And we got a comment from a one Mitch Henry. He's a judge of this contest. And he said, I can easily see this in some kind of Space Invaders clone mobile game. And he means that in the best possible way. So clearly the judges like this because it kind of reminds him of video games. Clearly Mitch Henry, one of the judges, enjoys his video games. So, so my friends, if you can kind of put in a little bit of inspiration from some video games or, uh, kind of capture the aesthetic of this mock to some degree. You already know Mitch Henry's going to approve. So take some notes. That's something you could consider doing. Because if you want to win and you're in it for the gold, there's a pathway you can take to get that. I love how the bulk of this build is kind of based off this sort of octo part. And I always call it that because it kind of has that eight connection to it. But let's go to Bricklink and refer to it by its actual name because, wow, it's such a thrilling and exciting name. It's Plate Modified 2x2 two two with bar frame octagonal reinforced completely round studs. Wow, thrilling. What a great, very dumbed down, simple name. Not at all. But still, this piece. Great piece. Lots of connection points on it, whether it's studs or the lightsaber rod connections there. So much that you can work off of here. And it helps to create some funky, interesting, sort of more round shapes than your typical kind of blocky look. Uh, and, you know, that part here is very much, you know, without it, this whole mock would have been a little bit more difficult to create. So if you've got some of those pieces, that could be a really good stimulus for you to make something much like this. Let's now move on to the next mock. This is by Keheru Nizam. And it's called Deep Sea Exploration Mecha 2.0. So sure, this is like sea-based, and none of those planets really have any water on them, except maybe Mars, we don't know, we've sometimes found water on Mars and stuff, who knows. Besides the point though, the general look of this does look very exploration-based, and that could fit very well with, you know, exploring a funky planet of some kind. And even still, this is just a cool-looking mech, and has an interesting cockpit design and stuff, so there's notes that you can be taking that you could be applying to whatever it is that you're entering. So yeah, I mentioned the cockpit before, that piece is from one of the older underwater LEGO themes from, I believe, like the 90s. I think those themes came out. Very, very cool pieces in those sets, and yeah, definitely interesting to, to look into some older LEGO themes, or any like kind of LEGO themes, and just sort of see what pieces they've got, and yeah, maybe one of those pieces might be a, a good stimulus for a mock for you, or you go, actually, hey, you know what, this specific cockpit piece that comes in this one set, or this particular weapon piece, or this, you know, other random part, that actually could work really well as this sort of sci-fi looking mech cockpit part, or actually, I could use this to literally physically build Neptune, or something like that, you know. That is completely up to you, but, you know, study your pieces, see what you can do, because uh, like this here, he's used this piece to make a really awesome cockpit design, uh, and especially the sort of pop of trans blue there for that cockpit looks super cool. Also, a lot of stickers being used on this, as well as printed pieces. You know, you've got this dino sticker on the back here, you've got this danger sticker from, uh, I believe that's from Aqua, Ra Aqua Raiders. Uh, then you've got this sort of caution symbol, and this code here that I believe is from a Lego movie set and some other arrow pieces and other stickers here that I'm not seeing right now. But use stickers to your advantage, you know, if you're building a mech especially, 
Mechs always seem to have little caution symbols or, you know, little, you know, press this to fire this button or whatever, you know. You kind of take a little bit more of a look into, you know, various things that mechs appear in, whether that's sort of movies, anime, television shows, or, you know, other things that you might have read or watched. Or even things like Exoforce. A lot of those sets had, had a whole bunch of stickers in them and they had plenty of stickers all over them with different words and numbers and symbols and things like that. So, you know, take a look at some of your printed pieces or your stickers and things and see if you can apply it to the mock because it kind of just adds a little bit more extra something cool to them that kind of makes it seem a little bit more grounded and realistic to some degree, which is cool. Also, this utilizes a whole bunch of mixel joints here, which helps get a bunch of posability and helps to connect everything very nicely. Of course, again, this mock is a little bit system heavy, but again, like I'm saying, you can use stickers and other specific awesome pieces to, to really add a bit of uh, something special to a mock. So that's something to consider for sure. Some great stuff going on here. Let's move on to the next mock. This is a mock by Alfie and is called Martian Colony. So of course that's something you could do is build a civilization on one of these planets, whether it's sci-fi based or, well, it kind of has to be sci-fi based because to our knowledge no one lives on the other planets. But besides the point, Really great idea to use a whole bunch of CCBS pieces or other Bionicle weapon pieces like that because, as we see here, they make brilliant skyscrapers, especially very sort of sci-fi looking skyscrapers. I never really would have thought of using weapon pieces like that to form this funky looking tower of some kind, but yet it works so well and then you kind of build in different windshields and, you know, aerials and things like that around it or, you know, put some other things around it so that it uh, kind of blends in very nicely with a few other things and towers and things like that. You've got a very nice looking city. And heck, this kind of reminds me of the uh, sci-fi city that we saw in the last this podcast that I did with Mitch Henry when we were talking about Biocup stuff and how he was really, really enjoying seeing that sort of sci-fi city. So that might be something to consider is uh, making a sci-fi city because in the past Mitch Henry has liked that and I'm sure some of the other judges liked that too because that mock did very well in that round that it was in. So that could work for you in a future round to build a sort of sci-fi city. And honestly, making a sci-fi city, it's the perfect thing to get some really nice part usages in. It almost seems to just kind of lend itself to creating really clever part usages. So that's definitely something to consider because you know nice part usages are going to get you further in the uh, in the contest here. Speaking of nice part usages, I absolutely love this little tiny spaceship here at the top. Using this printed Chariot Imway piece here, it kind of makes it look like it's got a cockpit and other sort of greebly detailing on this spaceship here and then this little jet stream coming out of it. There's so much life on this and yet it's like two pieces, you know, a little more than two pieces. What is, it's in the single digits, the amount of pieces that this set, this little this little guy has here. But that again, that printing does so much for this little spaceship here. This tiny little detail is, is helping this mock so much. It's beautiful. And I also love the kind of system base here, giving it this very nice sort of Martian landscape with the orange and stuff. Even putting a bit of CCBS in there to kind of uh, form the base of one of these towns towers here. But yeah, otherwise all these slopes and things here does create this very effective Martian landscape and, you know, it's a nice way of introducing just a little bit of system but not too much because of course you're not allowed too much system in the bio cup here. I think it's perfect. Yeah, and a really, really creative different take uh, on one of the planet themes here. Very cool. And on to the final mock now. This is a mock by Mika Biederman and is called Tanthu, the Ancient Entity. So of course this thing is huge and it's amazing but it actually doesn't technically use a lot of pieces to some degree. He's just got a bunch of pieces but bought them in bulk. So if you were actually kind of lay out all the pieces that is in this specific thing, it would still be a lot of pieces numerically, but the different types of pieces, it would be the same thing repeated lots of times. You, you take a look at the mouth. It's that gray piece, which honestly, I have no idea what that gray piece is, but it looks cool. It's a whole bunch of those repeated. Then you look pretty much everywhere else. It's a whole bunch of tire pieces repeated. Sure, those tires are in slightly varying different sizes, but for the most part, they're relatively similar pieces. And then you see a bunch of tentacle pieces, again, repeated pieces that appear multiple times on multiple places on this mock. All of these eyes are fairly different and stuff, and yes, there's a whole bunch of other sort of technical structural stuff throughout this, which would be a whole bunch of other different random pieces and stuff like that, but the bulk of the stuff that you're seeing is repeated parts. So that's something to consider. Maybe you can buy sort of maybe five or six different pieces, but you buy them in bulk and you repeat them throughout the mock, and you can still achieve a really beautiful, nice looking mock like this one here. And this has some really awesome stuff going on here. This big, giant, gaping mouth, and you can kind of see the insides here. Multiple repeated tentacles with uh, creating beautiful shapes with all these tires. And also this eye concept of just thousands of, you know, red eyes in various different shapes and sizes and just 
you know, literally his entire head it just seems to be eyes like that. Such a, a clever, creative, unique idea, and very effective at creating this really alien, creepy, scary-looking monster thing. And it would be fitting, you know, any of those planets could have this giant ancient alien hiding under the surface, or living on it in your sci-fi world, or even in our world, and, you know, the fact this is some ancient entity, perhaps it's been summoned, or it's finally awakened after all of these years, and it is now terrorizing the planet or moon that you have been given. Also, this mock is cool because it's in micro-scale. So micro scale is different from minifigure scale or any other kind of scale because it's, you know, minifigure scale, which is what most LEGO sets are built in, is built for a minifigure scale. It's so that a minifigure kind of everything is scaled to that size. Whereas micro scale is built to a much smaller size. So of course this ship is tiny, but if you were a little dude on that ship, this makes this giant alien thing way bigger than it even is as an actual set, a little mock here. So that's also something to consider. Maybe you want to kind of play with scale. You want to build uh, you know, this really tiny mock, but the scale you're building it at, it's actually meant to be much larger compared to how big a human is in that world. Or you build something very huge like this, and then you build something else that's to scale next to it, like a little spaceship or something, and you go, oh, this thing is actually really huge. That sort of stuff can really be cool, and then that way you don't actually have to build it to this huge scale and use thousands upon millions of pieces. Instead, you put something near it so that it can be scaled and appear to be bigger in the world that it's been built in, that sort of thing. Which is a, a really clever approach uh, and a way to, to communicate stuff differently on a mock, which is great. So yeah, an awesome concept and a very clever way of approaching the theme as well, if this is something you wanted to do. But before we finish, here's a little quick breakdown on how he built all of these funky eyes. A bit more of a kind of complex system here, a whole bunch of random pieces, but that's always something to think about. You know, buy a cup, you only need one picture to enter. You could do that. You could build a mock that you really only can view from one specific angle. But if you were looking at it from the other angle, it'd be this weird mess of pieces much like this. But it gets the job done. It doesn't matter if it doesn't look good. And then it's that thing. You only need to take one picture and then enter that one picture. So there's no reason that you need to show the ugly backside or any other parts of the mock that aren't as flattering. You know, focus on it from one specific angle, photograph it from that angle, and you're Gucci. It doesn't matter what you do and how you build it. And if it looks awful underneath or structurally it looks weird... Who cares? No one's going to see it. So there you go. So that has been Mox uh, focusing around the solar system, or concepts at least relating to them somehow. Pretty awesome. If you enjoyed this episode, there are other Bionicle Inspiration Series episodes or Biocup coverage episodes that you can check out. And by all means, be sure to check the links in the description to the Mox that you saw in today's episode and check out some of the other stuff that these talented builders have made. And also, if you're interested, my social media links are there as well. Otherwise... I'll see you on Saturday for your regular scheduled Bionicle Inspiration Series episode, which will be on color schemes. Oh, I told you. Oh, no. No spoilers for you. Ah. Besides the point, who cares? Now you can get excited. I'll see you in the next one. Happy building. Bye for now.